Good evening. Welcome to the uh, November 16th, 2015 meeting of the Master Plan, I'm sorry, of the Open Space Committee. Oh no, it must be a Freudian slip. Um, <laughs> in any event, um, so I, you know, this meeting is being broadcast live this evening. It will be recorded and rebroadcast. And I need to know if anyone else is recording the meeting this evening. Okay, that being done. Um, the town planner has asked to update us on two of our agenda items, one relative to the new master plan committee that's recently been created by the planning board, and also open space um, plan updates. So I would defer to you if you'd like to uh, do that. Thank you very much. So the town manager has advertised for the master plan committee. The planning board voted on Tuesday, November 10th to make it a subcommittee of the planning board. And it's going to consist of nine members, it's going to be five delegates from five different town boards and commissions, and then four citizens. One of the board's commissions, committees in this case, is the Open Space Committee. And town manager, uh, since the open space is a component of the master plan, a pretty large component actually, and we didn't have an open space committee first time around, town manager and I were curious if a open space committee member would be interested to serve on that committee as a delegate of the sport. So if uh, anyone was interested in volunteer, um, or a nomination could be cast and the board could vote for that member to serve. So I know that this was on the agenda that was distributed the other day by um, Mr. Benoit, and we haven't had a chance to talk about it. Um, well, I know Mrs. Dowdy's position on it, but um, I didn't know what other people's position was. I served on the, ma the last master plan committee and the master plan implementation committee, and I will say it's, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a big commitment. Um, I was on before as a delegate from the planning board, from the uh, conservation commission, and then Mrs. Downey served on the. Um, we were both kind of co-delegates from conservation on the implementation committee, but I was even involved in the visioning plan way back before the master plan got started. Um, so um, I've been through it. it. It's a lot of work, and there's a lot, it's a huge commitment, but. For me, I learned a lot about the community because I wasn't aware of so much of the history at the time, mm -hmm. so it got me up to speed on a lot of the um, historical aspects of the community and things that had happened over the years and that have altered the face of the community, if you will, you mm -hmm. know? So, um, so it's out there for discussion and I don't know whether anyone has any questions of Matt about what it entails, if you're all familiar with the process, um, you know, but I'd be happy to hear what you have to say. I'm not able to, period. <laughs> Just don't have the time. So, I mean, Mark's not here tonight, but he didn't, he didn't say anything to the gentleman here, right? Mm -hmm. So, I don't, know if, I don't know if you want to think about it, and we can, you know, I, I know they want to get rolling along pretty soon. They're advertising for the four um, residents of the community. And they'd like to have them, I think applications are due November 27th mm -hmm. um, at the close of business for the townwide, um, you know, open seats. So certainly I think if, um, they probably wouldn't get started until early December. Possibly January. Possibly January. Okay. After the holidays. Mm -hmm. It's a tough time of the year. Mm -hmm. So if you want to think about it, we could, or if you're interested in it, you can, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know what you gentlemen are thinking down there, but... I have to be honest with you, I don't have time for this. I, adding on top of the open space and my business just is way, way, way too busy now. <laughs> so, I just can't add on to that. Um, you know, it's, it would be a really interesting thing to, to do. I think it's very important, but I just can't commit to it. How much, do you know how frequently they're planning a meeting? We don't, yeah. I think at most it'd be twice a month, every other week. Yeah. But it's going to depend on data and its availability. So. Nine member committee is not going to be easy either. You know? No. It's, it's big. It's so big. it's going to run concurrent to the zoning bylaw review committee also. Hmm. Oh, is that when they're going to meet? Oh, you, that's right. Both committees have been advertised. So hmm. they're both going to run at the same time. Well, how are you guys going to split yourself up into all these pieces? 
Dad's gonna do it all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Notice how quickly he <laughs> loaded you. Yeah. Uh, TBD is my yeah. best answer. <laughs> Uh, I'm just curious. Yeah, well, maybe they'll have to go to like once a month. So it's going to have an influence on the scheduling, that's for sure. I would think. Because you know, it's only two of us. So. <laughs> you can only go to so many meetings. Right. You do have other work to do. Yeah, I have another meeting across the hall right now. <laughs> oh, is there economic so, development here yeah. tonight? It goes bigger. So maybe between economic development, and open space bylaw review and master plan, perhaps they should all be once a month. Something find out. Well, definitely. All right. Well, um, Alex, I don't want to put you on the spot, but... My card is full. Your card is full. Yes. Well, perhaps we can... Um, I'm sure we'll have another meeting before the holidays, so we can... I'm not prepared to take on another committee, but... Um, I think it's important, but hmm. I want to think it over. I mean, I just, Would especially like if it's going to meet more than once a month. Sure. Would you like uh, to wait till Mark's here and you ask your final member? It sounds like four no's and find out from Mark and then yeah, you know, I mean, I, I send mean, a letter. I'd, send I'd, hate to say, I'd hate to say no. All right. Um, I'll think about it, but I just, <coughs> you know, to have a meeting every week is kind of... Sure. It is a lot. It's understandable. So, um... It, it could, you know, if we don't get a delegation from certain committees, we might end up with two from another. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe they would give, they would mm -hmm. give this seat to another committee. Maybe it'd be the next committee member or something. Or, yeah. yeah. Who knows? Okay. So we'll table it until next agenda. All right. So well, when would you, you want to okay. go through that? All right. Certainly. I can, you know, I can call Mark and talk to him, but I don't know that he would. I might consider it if it was only once a month, but. And definitely will not do the minutes. If I have to sit on that committee, I will not. Don't, don't volunteer for chair. <laughs> I'm just telling you now. Will not do it. All right. Um, so you have some master plan, I mean some uh, open space plan updates yes, for do. us? Yes, we do. So, uh, I don't know if we printed out the list for folks. Well, I've given this out in the past. There were 12 comments from the yes, I have executive that office. Mm -hmm. And Eric and I had drafted full edits throughout the first eight sections already. And now we've burned through questions one, two, and three. And we've also reached out to the Division of Fisheries and Wildlife for item six to get a inventory of species description of wildlife corridors in town that they asked for. Some of these things are very um, research intensive to get some of the information, mm -hmm. especially number three. I mean, it's uh, just as an example, geology, soils, and topography. This section should discuss the effects on items. These, these items should discuss the effect of these items on recreation. Excuse me. So I'm not yeah. a geologist, but. <clears throat> We have to make it make a case as to why certain recreation projects would work in different soil classifications rather than others, and we tackled that one today. We did. <laughs> yes. Pretty dry. Yeah. Can you use any info out of the last master plan as far as the actual? Most I mean, <laughs> geology doesn't change. I mean, most of the, the information. Soil types are the soil types. Sure. Most of the information in the open space plan is from the master plan. <laughs> yeah. 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 So from this, the previous. The so I mean, you can make it related plan. to today's projects and stuff, but... That's what we had to do. But, I mean, the data itself is the same. The data and the soil information was already there. We just had to relate it to projects. We right. took the top three largest open space parcels. It turns out they all have the same soil in common. So really? I, hmm. I drew up a comparison for what projects would work. I want Granger Cliffs, Package Hog... Oh, I'm sorry. Granger Cliffs, the landfill, and the Pappas Rec Conflict. All have the same soil composition, but... I took you know, the landfill site and the Granger Cliffs as more of the passive site because of the rocky topography, regular terrain, and obviously the history of the landfill, and then kind of recommended that the Pappas site, if there's going to be any future field expansion, it makes more sense to go there where there's a cornfield next door and you can extend the stormwater or drainage and system there. But again, I'm not promoting an idea, it's just comparing three things and then trying to make a, a you have to talk about community impacts. Uh, no, erosion and things like that. 
I'm sorry. Uh, what about sorry. the new South Old Road parcel? That could that I can include in this because this plan predates the acquisition of that. Oh. Okay. So we're doing updates to this uh, it's, November 2014 plan, oh. and we didn't buy South Road for five months later. Oh. So I'm trying not to jump ahead. Kind of working with what we had. Otherwise, I'd talk about the walking trail <laughs> project yeah. as a passive brick option, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't go there either. <laughs> Mention mm. that would be a good one. Yeah. Believe me, I would. I got plenty to write about on that. Back to the future. Mm -hmm. So do you have to stick with the date that it was was that, even though it's a year old now? Just to keep it consistent. Otherwise, yeah. I'd be updating almost Everything. the rest of the whole plan. So. That's a shame. Yeah. I'm going to be behind when we have something we could use. Well, it's it's actually going to show that we're meeting our goals, if they're not in there. I suppose. Yeah. So. All right, so you're working on that. Mm -hmm. So we, we made some good headway today, and we also uh, started working on one of the tables. It's kind of the longest request on here. We had our land inventory table, and they wanted some additional columns with uh, certain information, including a legend to describe what some of the land use codes were and stuff. So we'll start working on that, finish the tables, and we should have some of the more intensive ones done tomorrow or carved out some time tomorrow to handle that. So are you going to send us copies to review? Is that what you want us to do? I thought about printing them out and then I realized I'm going to end up reprinting the open space plan several times <laughs> over the course of time if there's edits and stuff. So I'm going to end up doing an electronic version. Just that, that's it though. I wouldn't print them and bring them to the meeting though. But I can send you the red lines, track changes, mm -hmm. so you can see what we've updated. Okay. While we're on the topic of the open space plan, if you wouldn't mind, um, Madam Chair, I was wondering if the group might have some insight on item number seven. Um, the question sure. reads, environmental challenges. The plan states that no inventory exists of erosion, chronic flooding, and sedimentation issues in the community. If not, then one must be done for this plan. Now, um, couldn't you use the stormwater management data? Bill Coyle, they did a they did a study around town of all the point source discharges, yeah, yeah. The erosion right. controls, and cool. all you know, all those things were um, for the uh, right. EPA. Right. You know, wouldn't they have that? Yeah, the DEP stuff. Yeah. That's possible, we might get the data we want from that, it's a good idea. Because he had to do an inventory all throughout the community mm -hmm. of all those things. Okay. Sure. It would seem like a good place to at least start. Yeah, that's why I wanted to read the question. I thought maybe somebody on, yeah. on the committee might have ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the section on development impact, forestry issues, and environmental equity must be added. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's um, there's a workbook that we're gonna that we yeah found that we can reference to kind of answer those questions. And there's some examples. Yeah, Mike. <coughs> but um, that's a really good idea. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So those data that went to the stormwater management yep. uh, plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, comprehensive environmental uh, consultant. Yeah. Town hire that might. Have okay. Cool. Thank you. That's my homework. The only other thought I would have had was maybe if um, CMRPC had some data, but I would try, I would try um, what we collected for the sure. someone mentioned. Yeah, CMRPC helped with this too. They did not help with this version, the original version they did. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of the guy's name that was Steve something came from. Steve Wallace. That's it. Yeah. That's it. But that's all I had to bring. All right. All right. Well, thank, thank you very you much for your time. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a great evening. Good night. All right. So we're back to our chart. Okay. Do we want to dive right in? Sure. So we are reviewing our list of town vacant parcels. 
where are we at? And we were we are at the location is Cemetery Road, mm -hmm. Map Nine, Lot Fifty Five. Hey, right. yeah. before we start this discussion, actually, there were some questions that had come up about different parcels at our last meeting, mm -hmm. and I had done a little bit of research just to look in at, into them. Mm -hmm. right. Thought we could, uh, I could give you an update real sure. quick. Sure, that's fine. Before um, we start cemetery room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let, let's um, briefly we'll go to Packachog Street, map twenty-seven, parcel sixteen. Does it have a street number? Uh, no. No. Okay. Map, map twenty-seven. Yep. Yeah. Well, what? Sixteen. Parcel sixteen, but it doesn't have a street number. So the Pappas Recreational Complex is just just above it, and this is, you know, a budding backland. Okay. And there was some concern, or there was a, a question as to whether the parcel might have a deed restriction on the use. Mm -hmm. And it was the parcel was gifted to the town, and the res the deed did carry some restrictions. It was essentially that it couldn't be clear cut and, and developed for you know anything other than recreational lands. It's a lot more specific than that, but that's the, the gist of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so right now the town is proposing the walking um, walking trail plans for for that parcel and that would be completely consistent with with that deed. <clears throat> and we had a question on there's another one with no address. Okay. It's on Paul Street. Oh yeah. Um map fifty six, parcel twelve. It's um in between land on, on a development mm -hmm. off of Paul Street and you know we were sort of wondering if this looked like a road or what why hadn't this been developed. you know developed mm -hmm. and it turns out that behind here this is all it's all wetlands oh mm -hmm. we just had somebody come in with a plan for this parcel down mm -hmm. here 518 and it showed the wetland buffer all over 518 so I, I can't speak to what the intent was when it was originally carved out, but I think the wetlands is, have certainly prevented it from ever being, being developed. developed. Yeah. So you think whoever was developing the subdivision just turned it over to the town? That would be my guess. Yeah. yeah. It was probably wet back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think we got this in the 60s. Wow. So it's right before wetlands protection, right? Is that the 70s? Yes. Well, 68 was the first thing, the Hatch Act. Yeah. But, you know, maybe the, the water was enough to turn it to prevent any development. There's significant wetlands there. So now we can move to Cemetery Road. Okay. Is here. And contours seem to be helpful. Okay. It's an interesting parcel. It's a tax title. <clears throat> it's behind Morning Drive. It appears to be landlocked. Don't we own land right around that, though? Look. I hate to have my back to people. But... Yeah, so we do own that one. We looked at that last time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
some power in the cemetery. So if I just bring this so the, the town owns this portion here that we looked at last time. Mm -hmm. And this is the triangle in conversation right now. How big is that triangle? That's 2.2 .2 acres. Morna. Oh, yeah. But you can access it from Morna. No, no, that's the railroad tracks. No. These are railroad tracks here. Oh, that's railroad. No. That come down on the easterly side. Cemetery Road's way up here. Oh. Our land is here. So. Okay. But they're not joining. No, they do. They do. Yeah. I think the only issue is that. This was that one with that little block. Oh, and we own this one here. Yeah, that's odd. That. Yeah, that right there. Yeah. That's got to be some kind of weird glitch. Yeah. So, you know, the town has frontage there on Cemetery Road, and then our land comes back to this parcel and then okay, to this I parcel. See. Okay. Oh, okay. So, you could build the road. <laughs> yeah. You know, hike in there. Yeah. <laughs> cemetery is Cemetery Road paved. No. Okay. Not, I mean, there may be sections that have a little asphalt on it, but I don't think that... But it's not a standard road. It doesn't no. have drainage and... It's difficult to drive over. From no, it's very difficult to drive over. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 That's what I meant to go. Yeah. Difficult access. Mm -hmm. What's that pond there? This year? Yeah. I'm not sure. It's not a big pond. I mean, it, area-wise, it's pretty big, but it's more of a marsh than I would say a pond, if Is I it? remember right. Because I've hiked back there and, um, it, you know, there it's definitely wet, mm. but I don't know how deep it really is. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go swimming there. <laughs> yeah. Fishing maybe? Nah. Probably not if it's that. Does there, I don't think there's a, I don't know if there's a stream in there or if it's just a collection, you know, it's at the bottom of a hill. Could be just stone water? Yeah. Like in a pond? I don't know, it doesn't seem like it. the cemetery road is not developed or anything, right? No. So. Yeah. Open land. Yeah, I mean, it's open, it's good open space. I, I just, I don't see anybody ever developing that. It, there's no. I don't know that there's any utilities out there on Cemetery Road. I don't know for sure. You mean underground? Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't know either. Like you said, there's several houses, but it could be private wells, septic. It is an art. So you think we should just keep it open land, right? I think that parcel is actually where the, the old rock crusher was for the railroad. Um, is it, I mean, there's only a foundation there now, but when they used to make the ballast for the tracks, yeah. they used to, the they track actually track. ate away a good part of that hill that's above it, because it was, uh, I don't know if it was ledge or if it, what type of rock it was, but that's where they ground it up into the little pieces that they used as ballast for the tracks. Spread. Huh. Was, uh, there, there was a program there by the National Park Service at the beginning of the summer, and I know we, we came out we parked on uh, Cemetery Road and walked in past that pond, and, and it's got to be down in that region. Well, it was more the trails, or there's yeah, there's there's trails in there, oh. like over cart paths or something. Well, I don't know if it's that sophisticated. I mean, it's it's fairly overgrown, but right. there's still enough people that go in there that it's not 
closed up. You can you can see the trail. You can see through. But it's not like a road. Um, yeah. There is a road that goes in there from the railroad tracks. Mm. But that's obviously private. I mean, at least it's, the right of way is private. Well, we do have the adjoining. The town does own, you know, all this mm. land. There's yeah, that, I don't, that's a pretty good sized parcel. Yeah. This is a steep hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at those contours. Yeah, but, you know, if, if there are trails, maybe that's something that could be further developed or, or promoted in some way, or, like you said, just left as open space. Mm -hmm. well, I, I think that when it comes to, like, you look at a parcel like that, you go, what could we do versus what's affordable to do? I mean, we're already developing some things in South Hold Road, which mm. is a good use of land that we just paid a fortune for. Right. So where where are the resources going to be to to keep other or get other programs going? I'm not saying it's not a it's yeah it's a good idea. Yeah. Well you know and maybe if the open space when the open space plan gets finished, mm -hmm. then we'll be able to apply for grants. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can get some grant money to help with some of these ideas. So no, can't do all of them. Obviously. Right, right, obviously. Yeah. But maybe we can do some. But at this point, we could just put a note on, I would say, Possible. maybe these set of parcels. Potential. Yeah, put, put the two of them, yes, put the two together. Potential passive records. Yeah. Like Next. <clears throat> All right, this is Goddard Drive, and map 26, parcel 62. Okay, so this was at one point an extension of I think proposed extension of Goddard Drive that was abandoned in the town. Now it's just telling me the town took it over. This is 2005, we got it. cornfields that are off behind Pappas is a part of that larger group of land that we mm -hmm. yep. we're using so I don't know if there's much to say. Yes, I think keep it open myself. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's not the oh, access. How wide is that strip? Is it the high tensions? The high tensions. Oh, Some of the drives at the is that the access to the high tension towers in there? Uh, I didn't know this. Is it going down the other end? Mm -hmm. the, that's okay. right here. Is it? So, okay, so that's not part of that. No. Mm -hmm. I think at one point someone was considering developing down that, down in that way. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's Here's the high tension. Okay. Right. Yeah, that that's would almost it. be like a cul-de-sac, you know? Okay. Um, Would that access the, I mean, this says parcel 404 for the Pappas walking trails. Mm -hmm. Does that potentially give us access in there from another direction? Could it? That, that's a good question. Well, I don't, I don't know. I, I think this is the east, the drainage, um, sorry, the sewer easement. Right here you can see there's a path that comes down, mm -hmm. then it cuts in here. And, and this is what we were discussing last last time, the sort of mm -hmm. access from Goddard Drive. In a discussion with Matt and, and Bill, they were thinking that we may not necessarily want to encourage advertised access 
from there because there's, I think because of site restrictions or But I know that's something that you, you've raised or are um, you I mean, this has always been an issue that the parking at, PAC, at the Pappas is at times f overfilled. So if we're trying to build a useful Pappas, pa passive recreation area, you've got to have parking. You've got to have somewhere for people to get into it. Yeah. And it would Absolutely. be nice to access it somewhere that, that Maybe could have a you know another twenty car spaces or something like mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. and the only reason that people would go there is to use that land because there's nothing else that's really there. It's residential, right? Well, I'll mark on my notes, you know, potential access question mark. And yeah, I speaking just for myself, I you know I'd be taking a long look at that before I was would encourage that. But that's just me. And for what reason? Because I, I want to take a, I'd like to know what the overall plan is for that whole area. Because I'd like to see some of that remain undeveloped. Mm -hmm. And I'm, we just keep right. handing it off in chunks. Mm -hmm. You know, and before you know it, there isn't going to be anything left. Well, yeah, but we're, if we're talking walking trails, that has, I mean, that has real <clears> minimal <throat> impact. People don't want to go walking through a city. That, well, the other I mean, thing you got to remember too, John, is who's going to maintain all these trails? Well, you know, they'll grow in. They'll grow. They'll grow over. Yeah. You know? They'll likely be maintained by demand. By demand. You know, as people use them. You know, some of these, as you, you can see, coming down this down the parcel, there's already a. You know, it's a dirt. A dirt way, and this is pretty good width. For some reason, the measure tool's not working. Mm. But see, it's about you know 15 feet wide, walking down in there, and it it cuts in towards the the diversion channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The sewer easement continues here continues over here and up in that way. That eventually finds its way to Route 20 or? No, it actually comes right up to the, goes right through the state's land. It cuts across, down from Goddard Drive and then back up towards um, Peck Chuck Street. Is that the tunnel there, there? The drainage tunnel? This year, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on it? No. Well, <clears throat> I mean, I still think it should be open space, but... Right. You know, it, it has a potential for passive rec. That mm -hmm. would be the only thing I could think of doing there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next parcel is off of Rochdale Street, about 22, parcel 15. Okay, and this little note says Rotary Beach. Um. I'm not sure. I don't really think the beach would be on the water. <laughs> you think? Well, there is some land across the street that they used to use for parking. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So you can see the water here. The Rochdale Street, and then this is the parcel in question. Yeah. How big is that parcel? Mm -hmm. 2.2 .2 acres. 2.2. .2. Is that a building there? Looks like there is something uh, going on down there. On the beach side you're talking about? No, right, right here. This lot line's coming right through. Buildings. Yeah, that, that looks really odd. Mm. 
Looks like we might have been, should have been collecting taxes on that for a while. <laughs> 198 Rochdale House and Pool encroach on this property, says oh. the note no, in the tax guide. So, I don't know how they deal with that. Until this looks like the town received this in 1954. And it's really not much on the on the tax card. Value at eighty seven thousand five hundred. Is there a restriction on it? Uh, I don't know. I don't I don't see anything here. Well if they if that's their building then they own it, right? Yeah, I mean that's <clears throat> it's the you know, fifties, it's an old older parcel, it's we don't own that. Yeah, we don't own the building. <laughs> so if, if they're there, for how many? What's the, what's the term? Oh, that's a good point. It's yeah, adverse possession. Yes, adverse possession. Right? I forget how many years it is. Is it twenty? Is it twenty? I think it might be. Yeah. So you can just build on somebody else's property and they don't. The if land, they don't say anything and no they don't do anything about it yours. in twenty it's years, it's the adverse possession yeah, is yours. Right. Nobody so they mold you a, a vacant lot, have a lot, mows it, and just nobody says anything for 20 years, it's there, it's yours. <laughs> Speak now or forever hold your peace. Oh, I, I mean, if that's the way it is, but yeah, it, it seemed to me the town should pursue at least chipping off a corner of that and selling it to that property owner. Right. Because they're probably not paying taxes on it. Probably no, not. it says the um, tax card says tax exempt. So. No, but I mean, it says that, that neighbor has encroached on the land. Mm -hmm. Right, they're not taxing them on the encroached yeah. area. On the encroachment. Right. Yeah. You think that? I don't know. To me. But I mean, you, would you think they would? Well, yeah, you would. Yes, you would think so. But the the thing is, with that area, it's been abandoned for how many years? Yeah. Has it? There's no real parking lot up there. It was just It's dirt. all grown in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 198's parcel looks like it's got the house from 200 on it. You know, it's... Mm. Sounds like everybody off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome pool and coach on, on budding town hall property. That's what it says there. So somebody made a note of it. Um, so... I mean, we just I'll mark that we should perhaps follow up on that. Yeah, and you know, I mean, if there's ever any plans to do to do a rotary beach, you want to hang on to that parking, even though there's a lot of people that you know are concerned because it's across the street. Yeah, it's not real big. I don't know how many parking spaces, you know, legitimate parking spaces you could get out of it, but. I'm not sure if the D is super worth looking at right now, but let's see. Three, five, eight, two, Trouble with this site the last time, didn't you? Something wasn't working for you? Yeah, last time I just my search wasn't successful. I learned some tricks since then. Oh. some research on that. Yeah, 
Hmm. When did Rotary Beach close? I don't know. It was closed. I moved here in '88, and it was closed then. I don't think it had been closed that long at the time. And I don't know exactly when. Hmm. I mean, I know there's been talk of trying to get that going again. But, yeah, you know, Rochdale Street's changed a lot in yes, 25 years. Much busier. It's, it's, you know, I wouldn't want to be crossing that street because there's not good line of sight. There's no, because right. you got that corner. Yeah. 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 So, does the town have access on this side? Is that how it works? This is, yeah. Okay. Well, Robert owns that parcel as well, right across the street. So, that's for parking. Okay. Is that, is that town property there across the street? It is. What's that building? Was that made fun? That's the old beat uh -huh. bathhouse. For that. Bathhouse. Is there a bathhouse? Yeah. yeah. Was, yeah. It's kind of just like a shell now. standing there. Yeah. Interesting. Actually, that parcel is one, two, three down mm -hmm. on our list. We could just look at it now while we're here. Yeah, 175 Rochdale Street. Map 22. Mm. Parcel seven. Two acres? Yeah. Interesting price. <clears throat> yeah, maybe waterfront value. <laughs> a little higher. So. I don't really know what to say about it. Um, why is it not a beach now? Because of the pollution issue? Because of the what? Pollution? Is that what it is? Yeah. That's what my understanding is. Yeah. yeah. It was originally closed when the lake got overgrown with weeds. Yeah. And we, weren't, we weren't doing anything about cleaning up the waters back then. Mm. And so they had to close the beach because it was dangerous for children to, for people to swim. Yeah. I had heard so that they would put like they like put a white frisbee or something in there and you couldn't see it. Yeah. To the bottom. So that's when they closed it and then it just Is there is there a sewage on this street here, Austin? To go like a ruin. I'm not aware. It's pretty anyone, sure. Anyone know? I think so. Town sewer? Yeah, I think so. See if it can't sure. be used for um, somebody could buy that. Put on something, right? Build a little lot. Yeah. So the town wanted to give up the pipe tree, but of opening the beach. What are those islands there? The shades there? That little, little cloud reflections. What? Uh, clouds. Oh, clouds. <laughs> yeah. How much, um, what's the zone there? Is it two acres? Is So, residential B, we need 20,000 square feet. 20,000, so it's a half acre roughly. Yeah, so there's more than enough yeah. land. I don't what about know. the front? Do they have enough frontage? Yeah. Yes. So it could be. It could be a. But I, I'm sure that if they thought they were going to hold on to Rotary Beach, they wouldn't want to. That's what I would think. But it could be. So there's obviously development potential. Mm -hmm. Um. <coughs> but if Rotary Beach is ever yeah. to, if it ever comes, you gotta have parking somewhere. Yeah. But like yeah. you said, I mean, it's kind of scary to cross the street there. Well, it would be a liability for the town. Whatever choice would they be? There's really no room for parking. Yeah, I think the, you know. Obviously, <coughs> both parcels need to be looked into in further detail. 
you know, what, whether the town wants to open the beach or build a canoe launch, you know, maintain it as open space, or like you said, there's, you know, development potential, so. There is, but town needs a place for swimming, but there's no place in town to swim. Mm -hmm. It'd be nice to see that redeveloped into being accessible for swimming. Build the, the bridge over the road for walking up the stairs. Oh, one of the people. Wouldn't that <laughs> be something? Up the stairs, you know, the sidewalk bridges? Yes. <laughs> right over the highway. Over the highway. That would be something. Anyway. You could have a walking trail. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no? No. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no. So, I don't know. I, I would say just leave it the way it is for now and probably look in to see what this town have any plans about that land at all if they haven't discussed it. Mm -hmm. You know, if Rotary Beach is never going to become a reality, then maybe oh, no. it is a parcel of the town. Yeah, but, but you, we have to know for sure that right. it's not ever going to be used as a beach again. Is this a railroad? Yeah, that's There's the railroad the, there. Yeah. But you know, with, if we're trying to Hopefully, if some of these parcels are sold, mm -hmm. and we can raise some revenue to do something with some of the other parcels, yes. yeah. you know, right. this might be one that could be, mm -hmm. you know, it could be a viable house lot, and the sale that you got from something like that, you might be able to do some of your trails on mm -hmm. the other sites, you know? Yeah, you could easily put a couple of houses in there. So it might be worth, sac I mean, you know, if the town isn't going to ever open Rotary Beach, those are two, that's the land where the front is right under the existing public way. You know, there could be A&R lots, right? I'd, yeah, I'd imagine it'd be desirable to have. I would think so, too. And um, if, there were, if there was something to sacrifice for sale, that might be a good, and he's a spot to sell. Right. Because it's got the adequate frontage, it's got the size. Mm -hmm. You know, so that might be easy, an easy one to sell if we were going to go that route and use the money to promote passive recreation on another property. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. That is something to think about, too. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Plus, you could cross the street, you could easily put a house. I mean, there's no reason to have a parking lot if you probably to sell the beach. As long as they clear that up. Right. Yeah. We had a couple houses in there. So maybe we should explore that opportunity is to see whether the Broadway Beach is ever going to become real. What do they want to do? Mm -hmm. You know? you guys agree or what? Yeah, no, I think it's it's <clears throat> definitely worth looking at. Um, okay. Nothing's definite. I mean, we're just no. advisory it's committee. Just, you know? yeah. You get the water will never be clean enough to swim in, right? Well, you know, people do swim in the water. They do, yeah. And they and many people say that there's that there are no problems with it, but from what I've heard, a lot of people are, you know, from, that remember from years ago what was out going on up there with that lagoon, you know, they're very trepid about you know, mm. thinking about trying it. So are the, is it residents that live on the water that swim there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that pond, I mean, there's frontage all the way on around. a lot of, yeah. I don't know if it's all, all the way around, Quite but certainly ways. off of like yeah. Wallace Ave and, yep. um, you know, there's, there's a number of people that have, you know, Boat access and docks and yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Eat the fish that uh, live there. I don't know. I don't know. If, uh, yeah, that I don't know if they eat what they catch. I don't know. Yeah. But plenty of people do swim in that water. Okay. One eighty one Washington Street. Two point one acres, right? NEP easement wetlands. Where is that? 181 Washington Street. This is, let's see, so we've got West Tech Drive here, Route 20 is here. Oh, mm. 
Is this the old uh, Honda place or the new one? Uh, I think this is now a cheerleading gym. 189. The new Honda is further, further, further down. south. Yeah. N E P easement and wetlands. So it looks like a judge looks like the power lines go right through it. The what? Power lines. Power line? okay. Yeah. You can see the towers mm -hmm. here, here. Lines coming through. What's this here? Uh, it's like landscaping for this business. That's not our property, right? Town's property? No. Nope. It's a pretty good sized parcel. It is. Yeah, that's too bad. I'll run over 20. Yeah. Down those wetlands. Wetlands and power lines. EMFs. <laughs> Any thoughts? If it's wetlands, it's wetlands. It's just, I, you know. Not much you can do. I mean, I, it's noted on here, so I think yeah. it's, it really has limited value, and it just is probably good open space. Yeah. We're not even good open space. Just open space. Now, John, wetlands have a great value. What, so what does NEP easement mean? New England Power? New England Power. Okay. Yeah, the easement in this image, in the red lines, you can see that it goes right through it. Pretty big easement. Wow. Okay. Back to Cemetery Road. Oh, okay. I wonder if this is in our same area. Map 9, Lot 52. It's going to be in the same area. Yeah, it's that little square that mentioned earlier so we said that you know together with those other cemetery road parcels mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know there's some potential for passive recreation right. okay that's where we get our frontage right on on cemetery road Carpenter Street. Map 6, parcel 48. Where do you have Carpenter Street? Have to give her a It's not a real no. street. It's a, not a real street? No, I don't think so. Um, no. So Matt and I did some research into Carpenter Street because we wanted to know what the heck it is. Now, if this is our, our parcel in question. Right back here is it? Oh, I can't even click parcel. on it. So the town owns this parcel and this parcel. And there's a cross here that looks like it was at one point, you know, a, a paper street. Oh. Carpenter Street comes in from Hampton back here. But it obviously doesn't exist. I was going to say, driving this whole time, I've never seen Carpenter Street. Yeah. So, we, as we looked back through the road maps, it appeared on the maps between the late 70s and the early 80s. Oh. And, obviously it was never developed. We don't know, at this point in time, who owns the, that paper street. Mm. Um, it's not town land. 
Street, you mean just, it's a street just on paper? It was never a yeah, street? Yeah, it was never. It, it shows up on, on maps. It says Carpenter Street. It's got a line. Yeah. But you couldn't, you couldn't drive on it. It's just trees. <clears throat> so our, our parcel in question is back here. It's mm -hmm. landlocked. Um, this parcel. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this other carpenter street is going to come up on our when it will come up on our list. Can you just click on the two houses on Hampton Street? I think it's 107 and 103. Just yeah. to see if their property lines show a, a road or a, you know. An easement or something? Okay, there's one. Definitely has a... 97. Here, if I turn this, um... If I just leave the... Maps on, take the contours off. That way you can see the T. See that T in there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, that's Carpenter Street. Well, so it, it doesn't look like it belongs to either of the abutters. Because when you clicked on them, right. the lines were definitely right. showed that space. Right. Yep. So it may not be landlocked. This, yeah, this would, it wouldn't be landlocked if this street exist, existed. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that what you mean? Well, what I'm saying is that if, it's not like you'd, you'd have to cross somebody's property. If the town no. owns that. If they wanted to, you could build a road. Yeah, we don't... I think Matt said we don't own the T. The original developer would own the T. He... he his take was that we would, we would want to have some... Le get some legal advice. Okay. As to whether or not this... You know, if the original developer is, say, deceased, if, if we... Mm -hmm. Don't, we, we couldn't find any records on Carpenter Road. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we would want counsel to, to speak to. Right. Can you highlight the parcels again? Around it? Yeah. Or at least that one, that big one that we were looking at. Sure, sure. So this is our town, this is a town parcel. And actually this, because it's smaller, it's further on our list, down on our list. Yeah. Yeah. But that is a town parcel as well. And they both have bought package oh, no, the, school. Yeah, yes, yes it is. Yeah, that's true, they do. Both mm -hmm. about package one. In all of my deep thinking about those two parcels in this cross, I didn't even pick up on the back chart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's obviously that's it's woodland mm -hmm. behind the school mm -hmm. after you get past the, the grass, mm -hmm. but there definitely is potential access for the town. Right. These are, for. are these the towers up here? Towers? Yeah, the radio towers? Where are they? Are oh, they further, further up to your left? left. Yeah. This oh, okay, that's not right. Yeah. So, you're right, it is. It's Woods mm -hmm. st straight back. Mm -hmm. When we're at the bus to school, do you think we should just keep it as open for now? I some, when, when you, Louise, was telling me that it's parking out behind the school. I'm sorry? Did you tell me the other day that it's parking behind the school? Yeah, there's a parking lot. Well, there's parking or their recreation space or whatever you want to call it, but it's paved, yes. It's very paved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just paved this summer. Yes. Well, it just, it just, I've never been behind, I've never been in that school, yes, but yes. I've never been behind. Yeah. Because it just seems like, it just seems like they could use more parking there. Well, it's certain of course they could, but the, the thing is that if you look at the map, if you look at the school, mm -hmm. okay, right there, and the, the parking area is all that gray, yeah. and then, of course, you get the baseball field on the left, yeah. And then yeah. all that space there is used for soccer and other 
uh, gym classes and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. So it's the, it, we, I suppose you could potentially expand the grass by taking out trees. And, take, and clear back here. And increase the parking. But, you know, no school has enough parking. My pack truck is, is pretty bad sometimes. They have something special going on. Well, in the morning, too, you know, <coughs> for when they're dropping off. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, that's, that's a tough spot. If you get there about 8.30, 20 yeah. mm -hmm. that's a question of traffic control. So, we have open space, you know, for... So. Hmm. I'm not sure what our next step is on investigating this team. I don't know if that's something Matt really is itching to pursue, but that would certainly be one of the next steps. Is anybody paying taxes on the team? We don't know. Okay. So, yeah. Conversation with the assessor. Conversation with town council. <clears throat> to get more information. Okay. Next, 134 Voice Street. Map 10, Lot 31. That's our tot lot. Oh, yep. Yeah. The what lot? The tot, the tot lot. lot. Have you seen that? Off of Boy Street? A tot lot. What does a tot lot mean? It's a, it, actually, it's a, it's a site of a, the old school. There was, there was, was a school there. A school there? there? Yeah, yeah, so school, like when they tore that down, you know, it was open space and there's limited gym or playground equipment yeah. there. It's not very big. It's not very nice. No, it's the not, equipment. but it's, you know, my house is like right there. <laughs> so um, just beyond the top of that map. And, you know, for the kids in the area and the neighborhood, it's, it's a good place to have. So what you're saying is put a cell phone tower or a wind turbine there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. No, I I think it gets it does get used. Um, and it's a pretty neat spot. It's actually raised up from the road. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's right on top of the road, but yeah, it's it's a it's, a, it's a, actually a it's a hill. It's not steep. It's probably elevated by eight feet, ten right. feet at the most. Yeah. Um, I don't. I thought it was that wall in the front. Well, I don't think it was the foundation of the school, but I think it was like a, a separation between the street and the school. Yeah, retaining wall. Long before my time, that that all changed. So. So leave it as it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. It's a nice Wouldn't be bad probably to see more. I know that it costs money, but to see better playground equipment. Well, food for thought here is that, you know, the other, there's, there's two playgrounds in the immediate Sorry. area. One is at JB, Julia Bancroft School, mm -hmm. and the other is down Franklin Park. None of those are that far. Depending what the what happens with Julia Bancroft, I can't imagine somebody buying that property and keeping a playground, yeah. to be honest with you, if they're going to develop it for whatever use. Yeah. So that may be an opportunity to keep something that's still relatively close. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a short walk between JB and that site. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to see the town portion off the back of JB, keep that lot as a recreational space. Well, I, I do too. I think that's a great idea. The problem is that you know, if, if the town is going to try to get rid of that building, which seems to be the intent, the leaning. Yeah. then, you know, asking someone to, or selling it with restrictions like that, would really limit what you could develop that for. That's true. Yeah. 
Yep. So, you you think a, a playing field potential there? Not big enough. No, it's. Um, I don't even think you could put a small. Yeah, a little baseball. Baseball diamond. diamond. I don't think you could even no. put that in there. I mean, there's also that whole left side of that parcel is, is trees. Right. It's it's a the actual open space in that square section is it's not that big. Mm -hmm. That's very uh, a lot of elevation changes there too. The way I was going to it, so. Right. And I help a little straight down. The house is 148, 146. The front yards are like steps. Oh yeah. So could you add some playground equipment in there, or is it not feasible no, you could. for that? You could, absolutely. Then I think the only, one of the restrictions there is that there's really no parking for it. Right. right. And That's why the neighborhood really yeah. just uses yeah. it, right? Yeah, yeah, there's no, I mean, you could park, technically you could park on Boyce Street. There's no, no reason you can't, but it's not the safest thing. Sure. Has the driveway chained? Yeah. They have so what does some have on the barrier there, there. Yeah. for playground equipment? Uh, I haven't been there in years, but I mean, just from the street, I think there's a swings, you saw some, yeah, swings, swings, maybe a little. Um, I think those merry-go-rounds. Merry-go-rounds, those little ones. Yeah. I think there's a climby thing. I don't know the technical yeah. Yeah. <laughs> climby things. Well, I just, that works. I about swings because I was very disappointed that the new one at Pathetrock, at Pathetrock Recreation, has no swings. My granddaughter was totally dejected when she found there were no swings there. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's when that was built, um, it's a space requirement. When you put a swing set in, you have to have so much clearance around it that mm -hmm. if you put two swing sets in that site, you couldn't have had anything else. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Because you have to have, I mean, it's a, it's a yeah, pretty it's wide, wide it's very, structure. It's very, yeah. Plus, it's handicapped accessible. So it's, you know, there, I, that, that, a lot of that stuff takes space, too, like having ramps and stuff. I mean, I know a lot of people were upset, but again, it's not the only swing, it's not the only playground in town. It's one of the 12 or whatever number we have. I know. <laughs> yeah, open research the ramp. Okay. Okay. Hawthorne Street is our next one. Map 51, parcel 1. So those are basically not easily accessible. I think they're yeah, well they're under the power line, so that's that's no good. And then there's I think the surface runoff and all kinds of pitches towards that area. It's all owned by the town? All yeah, all landlocked. Not much to it. I think we're yeah. I think we discussed in our last meeting that if you really wanted to get to <clears> it. You know, it does look like there's some dirt. You know, dirt paths that come in, but it's very, it looks quite rustic. Tennessee gas pipeline. No, it's not until. Yeah, landlocked. Illinois. A lot of gray changes. Yeah, a lot of those landlocked parcels. Yep. Yeah, and that was a tax tile, so. Again, preservation, conservation, trees. See what else you can do. Open. 
6 Perry Place. Map 18, Lot 22. So I don't know why she is. So. Yeah, there's a pretty good wetland system over there. Oh. Like power lines right up on the road. Yep. Little it's water. Right, it's right over the utility unit. Or right under it. I think this was part of the development for those apartments, I believe. And this was the section condos of, there? Section of the town. Yeah, that was it. That was it. I think that was that was built before I came in. Yep, and that's a private road where the front is. If that's even front of But that's that site's floodplain, 100. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. South Hold Road. We discussed tabling those properties. For now, have we got to any of them yet? This, is, this would be our first one. Really? Aside, from, I think we looked at the large, the very large <laughs> yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Tons of them. So each lot has its own designation here, basically. Technically. Because they were, yeah, originally subdivided as part of that development, and those lots were never built. No. So you can consider them all the same thing that non taxable bond for the next 10 years, municipal next recreation place. use. Yep. There's not much else you could do. Yep. Is there progress on the, the walking trails and stuff? That, yep. Where's that stand? There's an application going in front of the Conservation Commission on Wednesday. Okay. On this Wednesday? Yep. No, it's an RDA. I mean, we expect positive determination in the NOI, but <laughs> I just put it in the RDA anyway, just get the ball rolling. You should have just skipped it and done the NOI. I need a survey. <laughs> I have to show progress. So. Yeah. Well, we've got at least a potential trail system, mm -hmm. uh, small network maps, and that will go before conservation will see it. It's We'll see the potential so. Mm -hmm. Um so okay. we'll table South Hold Road. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the committee feel comfortable with that for now? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, for now, yeah. It's municipal use, but I think our preference to be open space is yeah. gonna have to stand for a while. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll go to Barnes Street. Map sixty nine, lot one. There's Santum Street. So we the town just accepted that road last year. Yeah. Just a lost landmark. Just, yep. You know. Oh right, that eventually goes towards Eddie Pond. Yeah, do you know what that is, Matt? Yeah. What is that? Kids call it sand pits. Sand pit? No. Are they quarries? Or? Or no, it's just sand. It's Why? I don't, know what, I don't know what used to be there. If it was railroad? There. What's something to do with the railroad? Not sure, but it's Quite a sight to behold. You wouldn't even know you were in Auburn if you were out there. Really? It's pretty neat. Yeah. <coughs> but it's not accessible except for what going down the tracks. Yeah. There's some. There's some trails, but long sleeves, long pants, and boots. <laughs> They're not very open. Where did you access it? Uh, maybe that's not. Zoom out a little more. <laughs> maybe that's not for public conversation. Uh, keep going. That right there. See how it kind of connects to the sportsman's club? Mm -hmm. It's kind of off the back there. Yep. Oh, 
some of it's their land, but most of it's private, <coughs> and you can access it just coming off the railroad tracks. That's what I've seen. So there's a building back there. It's a shed or something. Well, that's beyond the preview of our power station. Yeah. <laughs> but that little triangle is just landlocks, leftovers. No, so it's just open. Probably a textile. Yeah. Now it says here conservation land behind Sansom Street. So, so was it the note? The note on the tax card says conservation commission. So it's owned by them. It probably has that restriction. Does conservation yeah. own land? Just, yeah. yeah it, well, it can be left. It's been deeded land in the past. It okay. could have been donated. It could have been donated. I'm just yeah. trying to think. I remember <sighs> there's a huge wet one up there on Tandem Street. That's probably it. And I mean, eventually this leads to the whole Cedar Street area. Yeah. I'm just trying to remember if somebody was running the room. It was Lundgren who built the house. Mm. That's probably the way. It was Lundgren. That's when they wrote it, got upgraded. Mm. <laughs> Before that, it was, remember when it was dirt road? Yeah. It hasn't been paved all that long. Right. Yeah, there wasn't two of them last year, I think. Right. The next 16 are what, south? Yep. Old? Yep. It's a table, right? Well, yep. the table. Is this a good place to end or what? I was going to say, it's approaching 8. Yes. Do you want to stop here? Mm-hmm. Now, as we get into these little tiny parcels, I mean, especially once you get out beyond this page, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, 0. 0.06 acres and... What are we going to do with those? Yeah. yeah, I mean, is it even worth the review? I mean... It's up to the committee. I mean, you, you can see them for your own knowledge, but you could also kind of do it on your own time, but it's... There's, there's little to no use or anything at all you could possibly do with them. Some of them are just little triangles next to roads. Mm -hmm front of people's houses don't even make sense. Maybe there's right. a fire hiding on it or something. It, why would it have its own park? <laughs> there's right. just little and things it, like that. Yeah. Left over why wouldn't it have been, yeah. you'd think it would be part of this person's yeah. property and why would they bother to buy it when nobody's ever going to do anything with it? Someone previously probably owned it and said, oh, why am I paying taxes on this? Let the town take it and the town will take it by title in most cases. So, I don't know. Just, I'm just little triangles that don't make any sense. There's a couple on there that are interesting, but yeah. <laughs> Few and far between. Seems kind of peculiar, really. Yeah. All right, so we'll stop there for the time being. Um, let's see, we've already done ABC, so is there any public comment? Not at this time, thank you. Okay. What's up? Next meeting is when? Well, we were going to talk about the next meeting, when it was going to be, because um, a lot of committees only meet once in December because of the holidays. Actually, a lot of committees only meet once in November. <laughs> but um, I don't know what you're looking at for the December meeting, or do you want to not meet in December? Well, actually, we're going to meet in December because we have the Fund Committee. I'm going to be away the week of... Um, I wouldn't be here on the 14th. Board of Select and, and Board of Health would have this room anyway. So, do you want to meet on the 7th? I'm December. fine with being on the seventh. And then just not meet again until after the first of yeah. the year. Does everybody agree? Twelve seven. That would be the first Monday in, in the December, anyways. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The Pearl Harbor Day. Pearl Harbor. Yeah, it's December seventh, nineteen twenty-one. Yep. Right. Um, all right. So we'll meet December seventh. Do you want to meet at six thirty again? That's good for me. Okay. All right, so um, so that's what we'll plan on is just that one meeting in December, and then we'll just not meet again until after the new year. Okay. Um, now on the minutes, we voted the last meeting for October fifth minutes, and I have not I have not gotten the November second ones done, so I have to do that. We don't have any correspondence. Does anybody have anything else before we adjourn? Mm -hmm. Is there, any, is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So will it. Thank you all very much. Aye.